Hey guys, Night Ops here, and we're actually here with some Frostpunk 2 today. It actually dropped today for the deluxe edition. You get it three days earlier. And, you know, I decided to get it just so I can play it three days earlier and, you know, get some videos out. Uh, we are almost at 5,000 subscribers, guys. So, you know, if you uh, like the video, like me, or, you know, like the channel, consider subscribing. It really helps out a lot. So we're going to go into the story mode. I did a little practice originally um, because I... I hadn't played this since, God, for like years, the first Frostpunk. Uh, so we're going to do Officer, because I'm guessing it's like easy, medium, hard, very hard is what I would consider it to be. Um, so I guess Officer would be considered medium. Uh, we can customize the dif difficulty in the game, so once I get used to the game, we can pretty much, you know, move on. But yep, this is where we're going to be starting. So, you know, if you do want to pick up the game, it is uh, going to be fully releasing for the normal edition on the 20th. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> Captain. Captain. Can you hear us? Captain. Captain! Do you hear us? A generation ago, we fled the crumbling British We have to expand. After all, it's us who survive the end of the world. Okay, that was actually really cool. I loved the oil going through the streets and stuff. I thought that was badass. So, the Wanderer's Prologue. Uh, I'm going to read it. If you guys want to, like, read it yourselves, you can kind of, like, you know, pause it. Um, but, yeah. So, there we go. So, we must survive. So, yeah, if I, if I go to read it, I'm going to fumble over my words like crazy. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad about that. The Dreadnought. Dude, that thing's wild looking. Prologue of the Wanderers. And this is going to be a series, guys. Um, at some point, probably towards the end of, the, I guess, the story campaign, I'll combine them all and make it just one long video, too. But that might be a while. I don't know how long this might take. Uh, so the old dreadnought remains in pieces under layers of snow, but the scattered wagons still have resources in inside. First, we must break ice to reach one of the oil wagons and construct an extraction district to use it. Then we can turn on the dreadnought's furnace to heat us up. Okay, so there are some shortcut buttons we can use. So for the extraction, you can click X, and then you can pretty much, you know, extract the districts. And you do have to go, like, up to, I think it's eight when you do the extractors. 
so we could do that. We still have a bunch of people on the workforce, so we can do our housing areas next. Well, this is the housing areas right here. Because what you want to do is just get some of these extraction areas down. Uh, we can see we have some stuff out here that we can kind of go out to early. To kind of get to. Still have a thousand workforce. Dude, I have so much workforce starting out on this. Jesus. Uh, go down here. Yep, okay. So we have to finish some of these before we can go out any farther out that way. Or we'll pretty much out those other ways. Uh, I guess we can kind of make our way down here towards these this food. Like that. Nice. Okay. So we are breaking a lot of frost right now. <laughs> We're going to open up this area a bit. And that's pretty much all our workers currently working. We're gonna speed it up, which you could use one, two, three to kind of speed up a lot of areas. There we go, we're gonna go back down to one speed. And so the shortcut for this is B, or you can use it the bottom right corner. And we're gonna do an extraction zone on the oil here. And an extraction zone. Ah. Uh, why isn't it letting me do it? Oh, we need more scrap, okay. So our income for scrap right now is plus 21 a week. So we're gonna speed up while that oil's getting done. Yep, okay, we're getting more scrap. So once that's done, we can actually, I guess we can work on housing now. Cause I know that's gonna be like one of the next things is probably housing. Okay, we got a little thing here. So as the thick black liquid oozes through the pipes, our people rejoice. The carcass of this old machine is a testament to the hardships that made us, more importantly, uh, it's our haven in the storm. It has allowed us to weather many whiteouts and will do so again. We have oil. We, we can turn on the furnaces. So select the dreadnought. Okay, that's just saying what you have to do. And boom, generator is on. Yeah, that sounded wild. So provide basic infrastructure. Okay, yeah, so yeah. So now it wants us to build yep, two housing districts and a prefab district. So... Didn't I... Oh, I didn't actually get here yet. Whoops. I thought I did. Okay. We'll extract this way then, so we'll get the that prefab district done. I should still have enough once I do the prefab district, yeah. So we just need more money, just pretty much like said scrap. Okay, nice. Uh let's go back down to one speed. Extract on the prefab. And let's get our second... Oh, nope, that's food. Second housing district up. There we go. And next should be a food district, which we still need 60 scrap, so we have to wait. Let's go to two speed. I guess we can actually go to three speed real quick. There we go. That should be enough now. Yep, so we can get a food district going. But I kind of like how they did it with the whole, like, city aspect with districts and everything. It makes it seem more of, like, a civilization building. Which I find to be, like, really cool. Yep, so now we're gaining access to food. So that nobody starves. Easier to trap the warmth. So we still have minus five housing. So we will need another housing district if we want enough people. And we did finish the prefab. Or I guess people not, you know, dying. So we'll build it here. So we secured our immediate survival. Now we have to stockpile as much food as we can before the whiteout forces us to take shelter. 
To do that, we must produce uh, more food than our demand, which our current demand is. So you can right click these and it kind of like tells you stuff. Uh, our current demand is 60. We are producing 45 with this. Okay. So, yeah, we have the food district down here. We just need prefabs and scrap, which just should be getting us prefabs. Yep, which we have 22 weeks worth, so it's 440. So we're going to need to secure another thing of prefabs. We have maintenance here. Because uh, prefabs is something that we are going to be needing a lot of. So 18 registered is sick. So we have 18 sick people right now. So if they are able to work, it's going to take it out of our um, our workforce. Yeah, no, we're not stockpiling food. I was wanting to get those prefabs up to... So how much prefabs do we... Okay, we have enough now. Okay, so we can start stockpiling food with this. Like I said, we should have this housing district up, which will... We'll have enough shelter. Yep, so we have enough shelter. We actually have extra shelter now, so we have a surplus. Ooh, I think that's kind of eating. Well, I need to actually build on this fuel here, too. Because as you can see, we're not... We don't have enough... Uh, we have unfulfilled heating. Oh, what's this? So, Finn Kill, 42 Gardener. Pouring sand in his hands. We've been here so many times. The soil is depleting. A couple more and there will be no point. Erecting the hothouses. There will be nothing to grow food on. And the yield is so low. Either we pull emergency shifts or tighten our belts. Otherwise, there might not be enough for anyone. Ah, so we might not be able to fill stockpiles without uh, exceptional measures. Consider asking the wanderers to tighten belts or instill emergency shifts in food districts. I kind of don't want to do either. I want to see if I can possibly get enough uh, food without having to really do that. We're gonna go down here, because there's fuel here. And then we do have food here too. So we'll kind of get right there. Oh, it's a seal colony. So 400,000 on a seal colony. It's gonna speed it up. So we have that done. Nice, so we do have enough prefabs for another extraction center and another scrap. So we're currently getting 20 prefabs a week. We're gonna build one here uh, once we get enough because right now we, we really need the oil because we're at a minus 80 on oil right now. So against the elements, each day the wind grows fiercer relentlessly. It beats against our buildings, weakening our structures gust by gust. Without raw materials to repair the damage, our districts will deteriorate. The more we build, the more materials we will need. This is the world we know. Okay, so this is the, uh, the maintenance materials, yep. So we will use them to shore up our districts. We must uh, move quickly or the districts will be disabled. Okay. Yeah, so I need uh, maintenance materials, which are out here. Yep. So one, we actually need to get to these. So we'll do that. We have another material wagon over here. Oh, nope, go to that one. Because we're going to also head around this way. Perfect. Okay, that was actually the perfect amount to get there with that... Uh, with that breaking too. Okay, we're gonna speed up to three times just to get stuff done. Deadly cold. Due to cold, some of our people have frozen to death. Aw. We lost 30 people. That is big sad. We just got our extra fuel too. <laughs> no! Into the black, burying the dead. We mourn those who have recently passed. As is our custom, we take them to the oil pits. We gently lower their bodies into the thick blackness. The fuel that keeps us warm in life, likewise, preserves us in death. But death also erodes trust in our leaders. Without trust, there is no future. Trust in relations will fall every time people die. Ooh. Be grateful others have lost their lives. Ah, well. We have more housing now. Oh, yep. So, let's build it on this prefab. And then once we get enough, so what do we need? We just need 50 scrap, which we need one scrap. So we'll go to two times for a second. For this week to finish. Come on. There we go. Huh, 69. 
Uh, extraction, and we're gonna get this maintenance district. Perfect. Kind of gives me like a civilization vibe with the uh, districts, like the newer civilizations. Ooh, there is a new civilization that's gonna be coming out in the future that I also want. I don't remember the release date on it, so I gotta look up that too. Yeah, we're almost out of these prefabs here. Oh, what's this? Trea Cleghorn? 62, seamstress. So others may live. My knees ache and my fingers are so stiff. I can't hold the needle anymore. I've lived a full life. It warms my heart to see little Betty and Jacob play by the evening fire. But maybe this is it. I've talked with the other elders. If it comes to it, we will go. I won't let my grandchildren starve. Some people are ready to sacrifice themselves to lower the food required. Oh, dude, I, for I, dude, I forgot the like kind of choices you have to make in Frostpunk. Like, bro, that's uh, that's pretty hardcore, man. Okay, nice. We have this prefab done. I think that's our only other prefab, right? Like, once this one depletes, we'll only have the other one there. Oh, enough materials. Good work. Uh, we are now gathering enough materials to maintain our districts. Time to focus on stockpiling food for the whiteout. Okay. Uh, let's see. Aiden Fincham, 47 Elder. Shock at the sight of seals. Seals, I can't believe my eyes. We haven't seen them since before the Great Frost. How did they survive? There's enough meat there to feed everybody. We're saved. But should we slay them if the Lord spared them from the end of the world too? The seal colony could supplement our food production. Man, I don't know if I want to... I guess we wouldn't be murking the entire seal population. Just some of them. Oh, we're not. Okay. We weren't all the way there yet. Uh, I guess we'll just kind of go out like this. Because, yeah, there's like 400,000 here when I looked at it earlier compared to like a lot of these that uh, can run out relatively quickly. So yeah, it looks like the only, other than this other maintenance one, what do we need for... Okay, we just need more workforce. Ah, we actually need more fuel also. Which we do have this fuel up, because we are at minus 20. As it gets colder and colder, we're going to need more fuel. So we'll actually do that next. Oh, what's this? A mysterious symbol, the captain's legacy. One of our frost-breaking crew uncovered the frozen remains of a man in a tattered uniform. His shoulder patch reads New London Scouts 3rd Platoon, and he bears an obscure insignia. Some of our elders claim it belongs to a military organization, while others argue it has a religious significance. Maybe you have heard of this New London before and could settle their debate. So we could do symbolize his order. So, follow strong leadership and where militant squads keep the peace. So, pretty much a dictatorship. Military dictatorship. This will create a continuity in which New London has embraced order to survive. It symbolizes faith, which I'm guessing is like a religious zealots. New London is a city of de devotion that establishes a new religion and follows the guidelines of a ze yeah, zealous clergy. Uh, this will create a continuity in which London... Ah! gonna go dictatorship i don't know man because like i'm not i'm not about to sit here and go like religious zealots that just ain't me <laughs> uh let's get fuel because we have a plus 10 right now what's the upkeep of this 20 materials okay We're going to be in a deficit of materials is going to be the thing if I do this. Okay, we'll get the fuel first. This way nobody freezes to death. And then... Okay, here we go. We can get materials. And then once we get enough for a food extractor... Because that's also going to take 20 materials and we need 200 workforce. Oh, did it heat up slightly because we're not ticked up on fuel now oh it's because this is done okay since this is depleted we can actually demolish this and get some stuff back from it yep nice that finished we're actually at a plus 50 now well now plus 40 so squalor miner 
colder season, heat demand is increased. Oh, we're at a plus 140 for supplies? What? How much is this giving me? Total outputs, 150. Oh my god. Okay, this is total output of 152. I guess we're just using a bunch for what we've got. Okay, let's go back to one time, because I need to figure out what I'm doing right now. Um, Our fuel's looking kind of rough. Okay, so it looks like we're going to have to go into overdrive is what it is. Which can be bad. Oh, whoops, I'm clicking the wrong thing. There we go. Dang, doing overdrive, we're at a minus eight. I think as it heats up, though, in the overdrive, it'll get hotter. Okay, so we're going to do a food district here now. We're going to eat the seals. Eat the blubber. Blubber, blubber here. Get your blubber. Okay, so here is here we can actually like tighten belts and stuff. I can take scraps from people, return scraps, which gives me favor. Uh, I really don't want to increase hunger. So let's see. So disease is absent, so we have disease stabilized. So I guess we can. Okay. Hunger is absent, so it's stable. Gradually increases disease and reduces population growth. Okay. And squalor. Diminishing. Squalor gradually increases disease. Uh, squalor rises when there's not enough materials to satisfy this man for the city maintenance. What? But we have enough. We have more than enough. Uh... Okay, so yeah, I'm placing that there for that optional one. So we're also going to need these uh, food stockpile hubs. So I'll build one of these. Let's uh, speed it up because that's almost done. There we go. So we have that optional. Seals, if we hunt them all, we'll definitely have enough for the wide out. Don't hunt them all now. Hunt sparingly and we'll have seals forever. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's the smart man right there. That man is smart. People in the camp are getting tense. They worry we won't have enough or won't be able to gather enough food in time. Our hunters propose to slaughter the remaining seals, including pups and females. This will allow us to gather more food, but will wipe out what could be the last colony of these creatures on Earth. However, many elders have volunteered to walk into the Frostland rather than be a burden on our resources. Their sacrifice would significantly reduce the uh, rations we need for the whiteout. What should we do? Hmm. Greatly increase. You know what? Keep the seals alive. Oh, wait. Our elders will die. They will not reduce our workforce. I'm sorry, elders, but... You gotta go. 500 elders have left. Shoot, man. I mean, they're not reducing my workforce, at least, so that's good, but god, there's 500 of them boys. See, the only issue with letting elders go, like, realistically, would be there, that would be a lot of, that's what I'm looking for, information, skills, like, skilled information givers, that, that would be gone at that point. Okay, we're gonna go to two times speed. Yeah, because we only have 27 workforce now. Like, we have people working everywhere. Uh, I guess once these deplete, then we'll have to, like, move them to, to other places. But, yeah, at the moment, like, we're just waiting for these to deplete and waiting to fill up our, our resources. Yeah. Oh. Let's see what this says. Sierra Finchman, 13. Trainee seamstress. No more stories. Granny's gone for her long walk. She says I'll see her again one day, but not for a long time. She told me lots of great stories, Granny did, about blue skies and sun so hot you could go without clothes. <laughs> about a thing called the sea, like a big tub of water, which Granny once sailed across on a wooden dreadnought to visit friends who spoke funny words about how it got cold. Who will tell me stories now? 
Man, I'm sorry, little girl. I'm sorry, but she had to go. She had to go. The elder's sacrifice has greatly reduced the amount of food required for our survival. Man. Granny had to go. I'm sorry. So, so this is for emergency shifts. So trust falls if I do this. Hmm. Now, honestly, I could... I don't need scraps now. So what I'm going to do... Where's the trust at, actually? Where do I see the trust? I want to figure that out real quick. Because I could give... Is this trust right here? Ah, okay. So this is trust. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to give scraps back. They will make use of it if we survive. So it's nice to know the leaders care. Okay, so this extraction district is depleted, so we're going to just tear it down. So we raised our trust, but that's only to uh, do emergency shifts here. Oh, this is our trust right here. So overall trust accepted. Yeah, decreased by emergency shifts. Oh, I can't do it again. So in three weeks, I can I can return some more scrap. Ooh, that one's depleting too. Huh. I mean, we're stockpiling a bunch. It's, uh, the whiteout's coming though, that's for sure. Okay, we're gonna stop the emergency shifts there because it's almost depleted anyway. Oh, we got to turn off the overdrive, which is going to make our people kind of freeze. Now, if I turn on emergency shifts for the extraction deposits, that'll get me more. Yeah. To where people won't freeze to death, at least as quickly. Okay, now we can do another food district here. Ah, oh, I haven't extracted to it yet. Crap, okay. There we go. Food secure. We did it. Secured enough food to survive the incoming whiteout. Our workers will make some last minute preparations before the storm arrive. We should keep our people warm all this time. We will survive. So I'm trying to institute these emergency shifts, people. We gotta keep warm. I, mean, I love seeing these. It's actually really cool. Let's return some of their money. There we go. Yep. Get that favor up. I'd rather a full stomach, but scraps are nice. Hey, hey, I'm getting you both, people. You've got both. I've been giving your scraps back, and we got enough food to survive. Like, look at that. Our stockpile is actually full. So, hubs are H. Can I not build any more hubs? Oh, I just didn't have it clicked. Okay. Why not? I'll build that out. So, we're actually at a plus five right now. Oh, now minus 35. Never mind. Oh, I wonder if the hub actually takes uh, heat. I didn't think about that. Nice. Okay, so we got that food up. How is the state of the overdrive on the generator? So it's at 61% right now. Oh, here we go. Oh my god. Let's go to a one-time speed. Do that minus 1,000. Okay, over overdrive ain't helping nothing. Survival through sacrifice. When the whiteout hit the camp, the wanderers are ready at least. 
those who remained were, they huddled together while howling winds buffeted the rusted up hole. With a colony of seals to hunt responsibly for years to come, the wanderers feel confident about their future. No trace, of, no trace was ever found of those who volunteered to walk into the frost. Some say they walked straight across the snow through the gates of paradise. The wanderers emerged shaken but determined to continue their journey. They pray for the day the whiteout stops, the storms are fewer and further between. Maybe one day their prayers will be answered. We survived. Yeah.